Hello everybody and welcome back to another Abigail Page Designs gardening vlog. It is absolutely freezing. I literally have a sweatshirt, a vest, and my coat on um, and I'm still cold. <laughs> so I thought I would kick this gardening vlog off with kind of a an update on the cabbage plants because I kind of left you on a cliffhanger in the last one. Um, but yeah, let me show you what their current state is. So it has significantly less but they're certainly not gone. I don't know why my camera doesn't like to focus on those little buggers, but those little green blobs on the purple stem, those are all aphids. So I think the neem oil is working. I just have to keep applying it and I need to be very um, diligent about coming out here and doing it often enough. And I think I should be able to save them. I know that aphids, the main problem they cause is when the cabbage actually starts to grow a cabbage head, it will eat and make holes in the cabbage. And I would really, really be bummed out if that happened because these are obviously the I'm sorry I accidentally cut your cabbage too early plants that I planted for my mom. So <laughs> I would be really sad and they're taking forever to grow so it would just be, the whole thing would be miserable. We're gonna look on the bright side that there's less of them and <laughs> hopefully with more spraying and more watering and maybe a little plant food, we can hopefully have some cabbages by the end of the winter. So every day I just go through with the stinky spray and give it a dose of neem oil. Yuck. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. In case you guys are wondering too, unfortunately I don't think any of the herbs that I planted in the raised bed made it, but I, it's been so, it's been freezing. I mean, it has been less than 10 degrees every single night for like the past week. So I didn't really expect them to make it, uh, but you know what? I can always plant more, <laughs> start them in the house, and hopefully we have not so cold weather and they'll grow. You know, you can't keep them all alive. Unfortunately, I have learned that with farm animals and gardening now. So I, I think it's a good, good mentality to have, but it definitely doesn't make it any easier when you're like, oh, but I tried to, I tried so hard to keep you alive and then it dies, so. But there's always more seeds, always more. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my bathroom garden. <laughs> so I thought since the orchid is in full bloom, I should finally show you guys what it looks like. It's gotten huge. I'm, I can't even believe it. I mean, seriously, it's grown probably every bit of two inches and it's definitely taking up that extra space I gave it so I'm super excited to finally watch this thing grow after <laughs> what a year and a month way too long I just finished giving them the shower so we gotta get them out here we go oh my goodness it's dripping because it's still really wet so I'm gonna put in its pot in a minute and give you a better look but I'm so excited it's gotten so big all right, back on the plant stand. Actually here, the grow lights kind of leave it looking purpley, so I'll put it on my sink, but look! All the pretty white orchid flowers. Now, I remember from last year when we bought them when they were blooming, even when we got them, I mean, I'm assuming they had been bloomed for quite a while, they still lasted like a month. So I fully expect these guys to be here a while. Hopefully I'm not disappointed by that, but oh my goodness, can we just take a minute? Like, so pretty. 
And in case you're wondering, here's my little guy. I think he's really confused. I mean, it's growing one, two, three, at least four new leaves. So I don't know what's going to come of that, but I'll keep you updated on him. Just shove mine in the back here because it doesn't really... Uh-oh, shoot. All right, I'll give you a little stem back. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to actually dry this one off because it's all wet. And then I'll put her back. I think this orchid needs a name. Leave in the comments below what you think I should name it. Then when I go through the comments and I pick a name, I will have my sister actually be the one to give the A-OK -okay for the name because it is technically her orchid. I care for it, just its caretaker, but I don't mind at all, as you know. <laughs> but yeah, we got two other places we got to visit today because I got to give you more updates uh, and we have to prune my banana tree who has the other leaf that I didn't prune off yet. I think it was in the last gardening vlog. I, um, it's time to prune it. So I figured I'd take you guys along and this time we're gonna use a sharper knife. All right, I got my knife and I am right by my banana tree. So the leaf I speak of is this guy. He finally decided to drop so that way I know where to prune him off, which is going to be, if you remember, right here, right at the bend. There we go. So now I'll just give that banana leaf to my goats too. Yesterday they had a little bit of a stressful day because we did their goat hooves. So uh, they will gladly appreciate the banana leaf as a treat for their awesome behavior. <laughs> All right, so like this guy, they normally just come right off. So I just pinch them, but I still can't figure out why in the world some of the leaves are doing this. If you have any knowledge of coffee trees, let me know. I have done a lot of research on it, but it's still not coming up with anything closely related to this because the actual plant itself is doing great. I mean, it has tons and tons of new growth, but it still ends up with these browning leaves. So I don't know if it's some sort of like rust or I'm not sure brown spot I literally have no ideas or maybe it's just you know kind of stressed out I have no idea I do water it once a week so I don't know if that's enough too little I'm still kind of new to the whole coffee plant thing but for the most part I'm pretty pleased with it it's a it's a healthy plant it's definitely getting bigger which is exciting, and hopefully one day I can actually brew myself some coffee from this guy. And, and then in case you're really wondering, here are my crazy dragon fruits. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to repot them soon. I have unfortunately not had the time, but next week I am dedicating myself solely to gardening because my herb garden was kind of a flop, so I think I'm going to just go with kale now. I tend to do really good with kale and growing kale. I mean, last year I just, I had kale coming out of my ears. I froze some, I made kale chips. So we're gonna go with what I know and go that route. Cause all of, I think all of my sprouts except one died, which is just, I don't know, really sad. But we will, uh, we'll just go back to the basics here. <laughs> Actually, I'm sure, I that will be part of this vlog. So yes, I'm sure you'll see me next week. <laughs> and our last stop of the day is of course the greenhouse. Yay. So I'm getting low on neem oil. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure I still have one at my parents' hardware store. So I should be okay, but I'm really not seeing it kill all of them off, which is a super big bummer. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I just let it do its thing or 
I, I don't know, I'm lost. I mean, the parsley that's right next to it is absolutely fine. So they must be cabbage aphids. But then that doesn't explain the fact that my strawberry plant still has them covering and coating the stems and stuff. So I don't know. I really have no idea. I swear these bugs are not of this world. <laughs> and I also swear when I spray them, they just like come back to life. But, oh well, you know, it's all part of the gardening experience, as I always say. So let's go spray again. There you go, guys. It's the first time I've ever gotten it to focus. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is disgusting. You cannot tell me that those are cute little bugs. Nasty. Your soil is a little dry, but I'm just gonna leave it for right now. I would water them, but I don't want to spread more bugs. So I'll wait till tomorrow, and then what I'll do is I'll water and then I'll spray. And yeah, we'll go from there. I apologize for all the noise outside. We have uh, snowmobilers up here right now, so there is a uh, constant noise at my house. <laughs> I will be with you guys shortly when I have more updates or potentially next week when we do some planting and maybe planning too because you know what? It is February now so technically I can start planting my garden. Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to see. Hello everybody and like I promised I'm back and it's a Sunday so guess what? That's gardening day for me. I was outside earlier uh, doing my normal Sunday gardening routine and I'm still finding aphids. They're not nearly as bad, but they're still there. And I'm out of neem oil. So I made some soapy water on the fly, uh, like a soapy water mixture. I think I just, this time I made sure to add a ton of soap in hopes that even if the soapy water doesn't kill them, it makes them slide off. Um, and for the most part, I think it actually did a little something. I think as long as I keep up with it and do it daily, which we know is very difficult to remember to do, uh, I think I could maybe cure my poor little cabbages, but we'll see. I, I don't know. I am prepared for the best and the worst as always, because that's just how gardening works. Also, can we just enjoy this beautiful sun shining on me? Oh, our greenhouse is so warm and so nice, and I just wish it was spring already, honestly. <laughs> but you know what? I'll take this day. I am going to get my sunshine fix because I think it's supposed to get cold again. I don't check the weather, but according to my family, it's going to get cold again. So... I am just going to enjoy my Sunday afternoon in the greenhouse. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, while I'm updating you on my cabbage, I have been grabbing ladybugs from inside my house because they seem to have bred and taken over our garage. So every single ladybug that I have found today, I have moved outside with a little cardboard box and just kind of dumped them in the soil around my cabbages. And guess what? There is one on my cabbage and I'm about to show you. Go, buddy, go! Eat those aphids! I I have hopes. I have hopes, guys. I've transferred two. I'm hoping that maybe I'll find some more with any luck uh, within the next two, three hours. But yeah, for now, I'll take two. You know what? Hopefully they're... I don't really know how ladybugs breed, but hopefully they expand and have a little ladybug family. And they will be nice and fat and chubby because they are going to eat all of my aphids. Aren't you, little guy? Can't help it. Every time I look at a ladybug, all I think of is my sister and the fact that she despises them. <laughs> she is terrified of ladybugs. But I think they're great. I mean, they're great for gardens. They eat all pests. So, honestly, I always remind her of that. And I'm like, don't kill it. Like... Ladybugs are good bugs, not bad bugs. So 
for the most part, she respects that, but she still does scream when uh, one is in our bathroom or on her bed. She does not like it. Just blocking the sun. Ignore that. But I also am in the greenhouse today because I'm going to be kind of venturing off of a gardening realm that I've never really tackled before. And I, I don't know, we shall see. It's a super easy one and I hope that maybe I'll have more success than I did with my spinach and my cilantro and parsley because unfortunately all those sprouts didn't make it. So we're going to plan B. Basically, I went up to my mom today and I asked her, you know, what does it take to do like bean sprouts or something? I've never really tried it and I've heard it's super easy, so maybe I'll find more success doing that versus doing my spinach and parsley and cilantro right now, because it still is February, so I think I'm going to wait a little bit till it warms up and try again. But I still wanted to do something until then. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump right into this bean sprout adventure. So, according to my mom, all you need is these jars with the sprout strainer. Uh, I will leave them linked below for you guys in case you're interested. I will also try to leave these guys linked below because these are the sprouts we use. They're non-GMO, organic, super high grade. So I, I know she really loves them and we really love them in salads and they are excellent. So all she said you do for the first day is you take about a fourth a cup, so that's why I have a fourth a cup in there, and you put it in your jar, and then you fill the jar with water until they are completely soaked. You don't have to fill the jar all the way. I had a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, you just fill it to where they're covered, and then tomorrow I dump the water, and I rinse them off, and then I put them back, and I continue this time around, I do not put water back in the jar with them. I just leave them dry, but wet, obviously, because they were soaked. And then, the day after, I repeat the same steps. So, I rinse them off, I pull them out, rinse them off, put them back. No water, they just, you keep doing that daily until you see little sprouts. So, I don't know. We, I'm pretty excited about this. I think it'll be fun, and I will take you guys along on the entire journey. And supposedly that's all I do for day one. I'm going to take them in the house with me. I'm going to do another jar, but I'm going to film that one for an Instagram reel. And I will let you know tomorrow how everything goes. We'll strain them together and rinse them off. And we'll do this every day until we see little green sprouts. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I apologize in advance because I have been a terrible sprout updater. I was, I had these big goals. I was going to show you guys every day how they progressed and that failed. <laughs> and my only excuse is life gets busy. That's, that's all I got to it. And actually my mom helped out with the sprout process too, because she was my inspiration behind even wanting to do the sprouts. So she helped out and I at least three times she actually was the one that rinsed them not me but either way they are nonetheless still our family sprouts and i want to show you guys ta-da look we have a whole container of them i'm so excited we just started some more today i feel like it's been a while since we did the whole sprout thing and i really miss them oh they're so good on salads and i know that the rest of my family loves them too so 
I think that it's a great affordable option to add to our salads because we love salad in this house. Since we go through so much salad, it only makes sense that we grow some of the vegetables we put in there. My whole take on the spread experience, guys, this is so fun to do. They are quick, they're easy, and they make delicious food out of them. So I 100% recommend that you start your own little sprout area. There is no excuse for not starting one actually because guess what? They don't take up a lot of room. You don't have to have a greenhouse. You don't even have to have a garden bed. You literally just need a counter, a mason jar, and a special sprout lid and that's it. And as I already mentioned, I will leave everything linked below for you guys just for your convenience so you can click shop and grow some sprouts with me. Hello everybody, I'm back. And so today is my day to dedicate to gardening. I have not really been doing much as far as gardening goes and I don't have a solid summer garden plan yet. And I know it's only March, but I really wanna make sure that I'm ahead of the game and I know what I want when I want it going into the spring because Nothing is worse than hitting April and realizing, oh shoot, the snow is melting and you have no garden plan. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna kick off this gardening day with coffee grounds. Now, I tried to save some coffee grounds. Um, I'd say I've probably since February, but <laughs> I did it wrong and like all amateurs do, they molded, and I uh, can't use them now because they're all gross and they smell horrible. I was actually storing my last batch in those Costco nut containers that are plastic, and obviously, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, you know, apparently I, they just weren't gonna mold, but they did. And so I don't think I'm gonna do that again this time around. I'm actually instead going to put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze them as I go along. I think that that's going to be my best bet for keeping them until I can actually see my garden bed because right now it's covered in snow. I grabbed a Ziploc gallon bag and I'm going to put my first coffee grounds in there and freeze it. Okay, so I just have the coffee grounds right here, and they're still pretty wet, but apparently if I just freeze them, they're supposed to be fine. So I think I'm honestly going to leave the coffee filter with its little coffee ground Reminences, I think it'll, uh, I don't know, it's just going to be a lot less messy than if I was to like dump it upside down every day, <laughs> but hopefully this works. <laughs> All right, there is our first of many. It looks like I can fit quite a few in here, so that's exciting. Let's go freeze it. Ignore our messy freezer. I'm gonna put it right up here, the only available spot. There we go. I will have to let you know in the spring if this method actually works and if my coffee grounds are usable and if they are then I will recommend this method to you. Okay I got my gloves on here and here is my jade plant. I like to call her baby jade because she's still a little small but uh, she's definitely grown so it is time I think and the pot I'm going to be upgrading her to is this pink and white ceramic pot. I don't really remember where I got it. I do apologize for that. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. It kind of matches our whole bathroom plant shelf theme. So here we go. So I'm just going to gently take my shovel around the sides here.
actually going to save the rest of the special water I made up with the cactus food. So that way tomorrow when I go to water all of my other plants, I can use it on either my orchids or on my sister's succulent. Or if the jade plant looks dry again, which it potentially might, then I'll give the rest of it to the jade plant. Thank you guys so much for watching today's gardening vlog. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this kind of chaotic routine, I guess. I basically touched on all of my different gardens today. I did my house plants. I did a little bit of garden prep. I did some of the outside greenhouse work. I think I even touched the tropical plants. So there was just a lot going on and that's the life of gardening. That's why I like gardening so much. Nothing is ever the same. You're never gonna do the same thing twice. You're constantly learning and evolving your methods and gardens are about change. And I think that as somebody who sometimes Wow, that was crazy. I just had two birds hit my window. I apologize for that. Hitting the window all day long, and thankfully we have not had any deaths yet, but we've had to nurse two of them back to health. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. We lost the little decals that we put on our windows and that like keep them from hitting the windows. So we, uh, we have to order some new ones. I want to be able to look back one day and see all of the changes that have happened over the course of the years of my gardening experience. So I think that these garden vlogs are definitely the key to that. Please leave a like if you think that everybody should have a garden and let me know in the comments below. What is your ideal garden? Is it a vegetable garden? A fruit garden? Is it a houseplant collection? All gardens are different. No two people have the same exact garden. So let me know below. What is your dream garden? And last but not least, subscribe if you are new and you love all things organizing, cleaning, decorating, and gardening. I love you all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!